Barbells are the optimal training tool, and you can't change my mind. What's up, guys? Alec on Carry here. Today, I want to talk about why I emphasize barbells in my training and why you should too, and why I believe them to be the optimal tool that we have available at our disposal in the weight room because you know every so often people come along and they try to stir the pot really for the sake of attention right and the problem is that many of these people end up promoting a lot of flash over substance or really they end up emphasizing the minor players in the game as if they are the major players in the game simply in order to tickle the balls of all the social media algorithms and gain said attention in a highly saturated marketplace which in turn confuses a great many people who are really just trying to get bigger and stronger and it sets many of these people down the path of being eternal noobs which is a damn shame so today we're going to talk about barbells Barbells of all varieties, that includes the classic straight bar, the Swiss bar, the buffalo bar, the safety squat bar, etc., etc. If it's a bar, it's a bar, right? And in order to counter some of the recent barbell hatred, we are going to make a case for why these bars should be the primary tool that you emphasize in your training if maximal gains are what you're after. And we're going to do this by contrasting barbell training against two other widely used strength and hypertrophy modalities. Those other two modalities being dumbbell training and machine-based training. We will also touch on calisthenics training as sort of its own different but related type of thing as well. Now, the primary context that we will be analyzing all these training modalities within, the, the lens that we will be looking through as we make our analysis, is a general strength and hypertrophy context. As these are the main goals of most of the people who are watching my channel. Most of you guys, I've taken a poll, and most of you guys aren't power lifters, you're not bodybuilders, you're just average guys, right? And many of you actually take your training very, very seriously, and you want to become bigger and stronger than you are now, or even as big and strong as possible. And I believe wholeheartedly that emphasizing the barbell as your primary training modality is going to be the best way to accomplish these goals, bar none. The primary reason that I am so confident in making this assertion comes down to a concept that I call the stability continuum. And it's really a very simple theory. It's based first and foremost on the notion that force production in the prime mover muscles in any given movement pattern is dampened by instability. So, the more unstable that an exercise is, the less force that you are able to produce in that movement pattern using the largest muscles of the body, the ones with the most potential for making you bigger and stronger. So we think about training the upper body with a pair of dumbbells, and it's very obvious that since each limb must stabilize each dumbbell all by itself, and that no stability can be gained in the movement pattern by the limbs working as a synchronous unit, it's very obvious that stability is much more of a limiting factor in these dumbbell exercises as compared to the same movements performed with a barbell or on a machine. And in these exercises, this instability limits force production, which means that the prime movers are not working as hard as they could be as well, since the smaller stabilizing muscles are more likely to fatigue First, during these exercises, they're more likely to fatigue before the prime movers. That means that you cannot fully fatigue the prime movers, right? The largest muscles during most of these dumbbell exercises. Now that mostly applies to working the upper body with dumbbells, but what about lower body dumbbell training? In that case, that's where you start to run into more of loading and simple practicality concerns, right? So say I wanna do goblet squats or dumbbell Romanian deadlifts. How many gyms actually even have dumbbells that go up to 150 pounds? Unless you're in a relatively hardcore gym, you're not likely to find that, right? Most gyms don't have dumbbells that heavy. So that means that you have a pretty hard cap in terms of how much weight that you can do, which automatically relegates these movements into the, a particular rep range, right? Re generally pretty high repetitions, which means that the movements are better suited for certain slots within the program, not in the primary exercise zone, right? Now, even if you do go to a gym that has 
heavier dumbbells than this, dumbbells that go up to 150 pounds or even 200 pounds, right? At some point, loading these exercises with dumbbells instead of barbells into the strength realm of things, it, it simply becomes an unfeasible task, right? It, you got to for one thing, there's the logistics of it. You'll have to take these heavy ass dumbbells and generally you got to move them somewhere else, which if you wanted to ramp up, for example, say I wanted to hit dumbbell RDLs. First, I want to use the 150s, then the 160s, then the 170s. That means I got to take these damn heavy ass dumbbells out of this annoying rack in and out, probably lug them somewhere else all the way across the gym to actually be able to do the exercise, bring them back, and then grab the next pair up to do my next set. It's so, it, you just, you run into a lot of practicality issues if the heavy dumbbells even exist in the first place. If you're talking about, again, going back to goblet squats, I could probably goblet squat two or 300 pounds, right? But it's really annoying getting a really heavy dumbbell into this position. And I could probably still rep that out if I wanted to. But again, it just means that these movements are not, they're not good as primary emphasis exercises. They're generally going to be best off when they're relegated into the accessory, accessory and tertiary training slots within your training program, just not the, the primary ones. Now on the exact other side of our stability continuum exists machine exercises. Machine exercises are wholly and absolutely stable. They are 100% stabilized movements because the machine is locked into its own rigid pattern and the body does not have to stabilize the movements at all due to this external stability. So this removes any relevant stabilizer muscles from the equation entirely and that allows the prime movers in the body to do all the work pushing or pulling against the resistance. Now this leads some people to conclude that machine exercises are the optimal hypertrophy tool. The prime movers do all the work, no stabilizer muscles get involved, and maximal fatigue can be achieved in the prime movers. And while this idea may be true in the, in the theoretical world, there is a big monkey wrench that starts to rear its head in the real world for people who excessively emphasize machine training at the expense of other popular modalities. And that is that eventually, strength and hypertrophy will hit an impenetrable ceiling with machine-based training and they will become severely capped. Now I'm kind of gonna flip my initial point about the excessive instability present during dumbbell training right on its head here. But the reason for this is because of the excessive stability provided by the machines. The absolute external stability provided by the machines eventually creates a ceiling in terms of muscle strength and muscle growth. Because after a certain point, if machine works your, your bread and your butter, right? The growth of the prime mover muscles in your body will have outpaced the growth of the body's internal stability system to such an extent that the nervous system will put the brakes on muscle strength and muscle growth. It will cap any further growth in order to ensure that the joints don't become injured by having such disproportionately big and strong prime mover muscles as compared to the body's internal stability system. The body will not allow you to produce force that you cannot stabilize. So your gains will come to a screeching halt very prematurely if you overemphasize machine-based training. Who remembers Ryan Crowley? When he was training with Larry Wheels, he said something like, I haven't trained with free weights in X number of years or something to that effect. And it was very obvious when Larry got him on the incline bench, his body was absolutely screaming at him to stop loading weight onto the bar, but he did not listen. And eventually his pec tendon snapped right off the bone. In this case, Ryan obviously uses large amounts of PEDs and those PEDs allowed him to bypass his body's natural ceiling. His muscles were able to produce force that he couldn't stabilize. And look what happened. He paid the price for it when he tried to do so. Now, if you are not on PEDs and you rely excessively on machine-based training like somebody like Ryan Crowley, you won't have that exact same problem. But instead, your problem will be that you won't be able to bypass the ceiling like Ryan did and you will just never get very big or very strong in the first place.
And finally, this leads us to barbell training. Barbells exist as a happy medium, smack dab in between the other two modalities that we've already talked about, an optimal middle ground. There is no external stability provided during barbell training as there is during machine training, which means the applicable stabilizing muscles have to do their part during these exercises. However, because the limbs are able to stabilize these movements as a synchronous unit, there is much greater stability present than there is during dumbbell training. All this means that once proficiency has been obtained during any given exercise, the prime movers are able to exert maximal force during any movement pattern, any movement pattern when using a barbell. And as such, they're able to be fatigued to a maximal extent during those movement patterns as well. It also means that since the stabilizing muscles are forced to participate, that they will keep pace with the prime movers as you get bigger and stronger. So there is no bottleneck that you run into prematurely as you do with dumbbell training where the excessive stability demands can become a hindrance to long-term progress or as you do with machine training where the total lack of stability required eventually creates a hard cap on growth. This makes barbells the optimal tool to emphasize in your training the vast majority of the time. With proper programming and proper rotation of movements, progress can be sustained for years and years on end. And with an emphasis on barbells, one is much more likely to realize their true genetic potential. Now, before I get to the end of the video here, I do want to touch briefly on calisthenics training and how it relates to all the other concepts that I've already talked about today. As a guy who has trained primarily in a home gym over the years for the vast majority of my training career, I've actually made great use of certain calisthenics movements in my strength and hypertrophy journey. And actually, in totality, I've probably used calisthenics movements only secondary to barbell training in the grand scheme of things, right? I have done more calisthenics work than I have dumbbell work or machine work. And sometimes the calisthenics work that I've done in certain movements that I have focused on has actually superseded the barbell training that I'm doing at a particular moment in time as my primary emphasis. Now, in my opinion, and you may take this with a grain of salt because I'm not a calisthenics expert and I do not proclaim to be, but in my opinion, for general strength and hypertrophy, where calisthenics movements really shine is when they're actually treated similarly to the big barbell compound exercises that we all do and progressively overloaded in a multitude of different rep ranges over time. So for some people hearing that, it's probably like a, a duh, no fucking shit. But for a lot of people, it's also a, a little bit of an aha kind of moment to think of calisthenics exercises like that. Not everybody thinks about loading just the basic exercises. Instead, some people think about taking the basic exercises and thinking about how they can progress to the more expert realm of calisthenics training. But I don't think that that is the optimal manner for building strength and building hypertrophy or maximizing strength and maximizing hypertrophy in the long run, because then we are, veer as we move more towards expert skill, we're veering out of the realm of, of, of dummy strength, right? Of any idiot can do this. We're moving out of the realm of, of basic movements and we're moving more into the realm of skilled movements. So we're getting away from the, the basics of strength and hypertrophy and we're instead moving into calisthenics as a skill. But if you think of things like regular dips or pause dips or weighted push-ups or incline push-ups or really any other form of push-up that you can think of, as well as all different manner of pull-ups and chin-up exercises, you can vary grip widths on those, you can vary grip types on those, as well as inverted rowing movements too. And you can do the same thing there. You can vary all different types of grip widths and grip types with inverted rows too. And then with a little bit of thought, all of these basic calisthenics movements can actually be loaded up very nicely and incorporated into the training routine in a very similar fashion to many of the barbell movements where they can be slowly progressively overloaded over time. You can focus on a few different rep ranges, a little bit of low reps, some medium reps, some high reps, and then you build up 
your weights on those basic movements over time without really a concern for progressing those basic movements into more skill ventures, right? And I think that when you think of it in this fashion, that these calisthenics exercises are actually an amazing tool for long-term strength and hypertrophy development. The where, where we're not, again, where we're not really focusing on venturing too far into the realms of very high skill or unstable movements. Those are the domains of the true calisthenics experts, right? The, the, the journey to uh, the mastery of one's own body weight or the journey of somebody who wishes to become a true calisthenics expert is a little bit of a different path from the one of the guy who simply wants to become as big and strong as possible, which is what most of you guys on this channel are. And finally, before closing, I do want to clarify, before anybody gets the wrong idea here, I am not bashing any of the tools that I've discussed in this video. The dumbbells, machines, cables, calisthenics, and barbells, they all have their place in the long-term strength and hypertrophy development. All of these tools are going to help to make you bigger and stronger in the long run, and as such, they should all be used accordingly. In this video, I'm simply trying to differentiate between the degree of emphasis of each different tool that I believe is optimal for creating the greatest progress in the long run. Anyway, that's all I got for today, guys. If you found this video informative or you simply enjoy my content in general, please remember to hit the like button before you go and leave me a friendly comment down below as well. The engagement is really helpful for my channel. And if you'd like to support the production of more content like this directly, then please consider checking out my websites on kiraelitefitness.com and grab up one of my training programs. I've received immense reports of immense gains from those templates over the last couple years since I've released them. So be sure to grab one for yourself if you are interested in learning about good programming principles and just having a damn solid training program to follow. Anyway, that's all I got for today, guys. Keep training hard, and I will catch you guys next time.